Hello and welcome to a, another live lesson. I am your coach and your uh, teacher for this lesson, Sino Martin. And if you're new to my videos, welcome. Before you do anything, subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about confidence and self-love and this is the area where you struggle with the most and you know you need help with it. Subscribe and make sure that you are getting notified when I go live or when I'm posting different um, topics, posting different tips and lessons about this topic. So I'm going to dive right in. I'm not going to waste any time. I posted a few, I posted an hour ago that I was actually going to do this live stream. So if you missed it, you missed it. You need to be paying attention so <laughs> that when I post that I'm about to do a video, you can join me um, for these one-on-one -on -one live streams like this. And if you don't know who I am, let me go ahead and introduce myself again. I'm Sina Martin. Hello and welcome. Hi, Keisha. Thank you for being here. I, I help millennial women catch their confidence and heal from emotional abuse so that they can have a reality where love never has to hurt again. And this is something that I have been working on my whole life. I'm a millennial. I've gone through these experiences where um, I thought my entire life that love meant I was being abused. Love meant I was being hurt. So this is my... This is my ministry, this is my passion, and this is why I do what I do and teach what I teach on social media. So today's lesson, if you didn't catch the topic, is called Peace or Perish, What My Ancestry Taught Me About Self-Love. And if you don't know what's going on around these parts of social media, I've been doing what's called my hashtag daily self-love challenge for the past four days. We're on day four can't believe it's going so fast and it actually inspired me to come on and do a live stream tonight about this topic as well as something else that happened which is I got some DNA information that um, I wanted to share with you guys here on this live stream tonight so where I want to start is with what I learned about um, my family and what I learned about my ancestry as I said in the topic uh, today really I didn't do a DNA test. I've been debating back and forth about doing an ancestry uh, test for like some time. I was going to do it. I was really interested in doing it, but I honestly didn't have to. I just started asking a whole bunch of questions around um, my family, and I suggest you do the same thing too. See what information you can get from your own family before you go and try to get a kit because I've heard horror stories about how those kits sometimes aren't legit. Um, so anyway, long story short, I found out that let me say this before I get into the ancestry part and why it's even significant. When I was going through my process, not that long ago, just a few years of learning how to love myself and feel confident in myself and feel worthy, um, I thought that I had to get something. I thought I had to go do something. I thought I had to go accomplish something for me to have peace in my life. I felt like for me to get peace, I had to make sure I finished college. Or for me to have peace, I had to make sure that I had this kind of job or this kind of home or this kind of car. It was always something outside of me that I believed I had to go get in order to have this peace in my life. And come to find out, that was so far from the truth. It was so far from the truth. And the, the reason this ties into my ancestry is because once I found out the information I found out today, it really put me into another perspective once again, and it just validated and confirmed all of those things I, I all those things I realized that I didn't, I'm sorry, it, it validated and confirmed the, what I realized I didn't need to do, which I, which is, which was, I realized I didn't need to look outside of myself to go get anything. Everything I needed was already within and a part of me. So... Today, um, it was, you know, told to me basically from a family member that I found out, guys, can you believe this? I found out that my, I found out the direct line of my family to, um, uh, slaves that were in my family, like direct line up from my grandmother to up to my great, great grandmother. And I found out that my great, great grandmother was a woman who was a daughter of a slave owner a slave family and she basically got into a relationship with you know a black man and they had my great great grand my great grandmother okay and my great grandmother you know had a really rough life basically struggled this was like 
the 1900s, literally like 1902, 1903, and she was being raised up as a woman who had a white mother and a black father in 1903, directly from slaves, right? So my great grandmother was basically shunned out, kicked out of the family because she had slept with a black man and had this baby who was my great grandmother, my grandmother's mom. And my great grandmother couldn't read, couldn't write, but she was incredibly intelligent and incredibly spiritual. So my family, that explains where that comes from. Cause my family is extremely spiritual. Like, like some of you guys call it all types of things, psychic or whatever, whatever you see things, hear things, you're connected, whatever, but that's my family. So it explained where that came from because that was the story of my great grandmother's life. And um, again, she was this intelligent, incredible woman. And I heard the stories today. It was verified today um, that of, of this type of woman that she was, although she couldn't read and write. So what that said to me was that it really empowered me to say, wow, you know, what was that like to be that woman who was born in a world where literally slavery was happening at the very moment and your one parent was directly from that and the other parent was a child of the slave owners of your family and you grew up in that world not being able to read not being able to write but you still had this ultimate connection to who you are as a person and to god and then to know that that's my direct blood that's my grandmother's my grandmother's parents basically her line so it put the feeling in me that no matter what i still already have everything i need to have that peace that I'm that I was always looking for my whole life. And I'm going to get into the story in a second about what I mean by the peace. And the reason I titled this lesson Peace or Perish because I don't have to go outside of me to go get anything. Like money is not going to bring me peace. And I, and let me let me explain it this way. Money is not the ultimate solution to me having peace in my life. It's not the ultimate answer to me having, you know, um, clarity, joy, love to me having a life where I'm fulfilled in what I, what I'm doing. I'm, I'm in relationships where I'm honored and respected and I'm loved and I'm treating my children how I want them to treat me. And my husband is treating me the way, the way I want to be treated. I don't have to go outside of me to go get anything. And I thought my whole life I had to go get because as I was coming up, I thought that love was abuse. That's all I saw around me was people, women, being men being abused, everybody abusing each other, and they were calling it love. So what happened was, what really broke me out of this and what really put me into a space where I felt like I need to figure out how to love myself by any means. I need to figure out how to, I didn't know this. So what I just told you guys about my, about my family and my, my DNA, I just found that out today. I didn't know this when I was going through this process, but I was searching for something. I kept looking for some type of way to find that love for myself that I did not have and some type of way to find that, um, that validation and some type of way to find that peace in my life that I did not have. I didn't have it and I was always outside of it, outside of myself, looking for this job, looking for this opportunity, looking for this type of friend, looking for this type of boyfriend. And I'm looking for things to fix something that's, I can fix on my own. I can fix it by myself. I don't need anybody to help me do it, right? So I got to this point where I was like, okay, I don't know how, but I'm going to have to figure out how to love myself by any means. It doesn't matter what I have to do, who I have to cut off, what I have to do. I have to figure out how to do this because I literally can't grow in this space of always feeling like I'm giving, 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 and not giving anything to myself. And what happened was... One night, my boyfriend, who you guys know that, hey, babe. Um, <laughs> one night, my my boyfriend was my fiance now. He his best friend actually. We were sitting at at home and um, you know, watching something on the TV. And his best friend actually sent the video to him of this at the time when I was doing network marketing of this company. And it was like a Thursday night. I think we were watching football, and he got this video of you know this um this company that was basically saying, you know, hey, you could join and you could promote this or whatever. It was like direct sales. You could, you could promote this and earn extra commissions and do this. But the way they were promoting it was these young people, like 20, 21 years old. I won't say the company name, but a lot of you guys remember it because a lot of you guys were a part of it. And it was these 20 or 21-year-olds basically 
like living their lives they were you know going down the vegas the vegas strip taking a bunch of videos they were out on these yachts and boats and jet skiing and they were doing all of these things and i saw it and i'm convinced that i can do this i'm convinced that i could be one of those girls traveling the world going on the vegas strip having fun and finding my peace right because i gotta go get it nobody's gonna i'm still thinking that at this moment i gotta go get it nobody's gonna give it to me i gotta figure it out so at this moment, I've never been in any type of business. I've never had my own business. I've never run my own business at the time of me seeing this video. And um, I was like, I don't care. I could do that. You know, I have 10 years, again, what I have. Always thinking about me needing to go get something to have what it is that I'm looking for. Which at this moment was just peace, confidence, and being able to love myself. And I'm like, okay, I got 10 years of customer experience. I have, you know, all of this, all of this experience in these different sales jobs. I can do this. I totally got this, right? So late that night, I sit down and I Google how to do this. I write up my first business plan and I open up my YouTube channel and I open up a Facebook account. And I sign up for this company and I go after it. And I feel miserably. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I did. I'm doing. So I felt miserably. But what happened and what, what I learned from that experience was that it was so empowering to me to know that I came from um I came from a generation that went through so much as they did. And it was so empowering to me to know that, you know, three or four women before me, they couldn't even read and write because of the world they came into. So but not so, but they didn't allow that to determine who they became, who they were going to become. They didn't allow that to dictate the peace they were going to have in their life. They didn't allow that to define them. You understand me? They didn't allow that to define them. And the fact that I have the ability to sit down, make a plan about what I want to do in my life, write out a business plan, open up an account, get on social media and share my story and find a peace within myself because i have my own i have my own um willpower i have my own choices that i can make i have I, I live in a world that's different now right and i have the ability to go out there and make it happen for myself it really woke me up and it taught me a couple of lessons and what happened was i said okay I can figure out how to do this within myself. But what I really need to do is shut out everybody else's negativity and not allow anybody else to dump their mess onto me while I'm figuring out how to love myself by any means. So follow me. Follow me for a second because I'm going somewhere with this. <clears throat> what I decided to do was cut out other people's mess. I was allowing other people to dump onto me. And I'm going to get into like three tips, three lessons that I really learned from going through this process. I decided to dump out other people's mess, not allow people to dump their, you know, their junk on me, not allow, you know, people outside of me to dictate how I should live my life, when I should show up, where I should go, how I need to give to them more than I'm giving to myself. And I decided to just protect myself and protect my spirit and protect my energy and pray for protection. Because if I didn't find that peace, I was just going to perish. If I didn't find the peace I was looking for, I was just going to perish. And it really, really got serious when I decided that I want to start a business. It got really serious when I decided that I wanted to start a business because I realized I don't have space to go for my dreams and go for my goals and continue to expand on this peace and this love that I'm finding inside of myself if I'm allowing everybody else to come dump their junk whenever it is they want to. Or if I'm allowing everybody else to dictate when I need to be somewhere or when I need to do something or when I need to drop what it is I'm trying to do for their benefit. I hope you get where I'm going and at least you, you know, you may be going, you may have gone through something similar so you completely understand what I'm saying. And if you do, tap up the screen, put some hearts on the screen so I know that, you know, I'm talking to the right person. But honestly, it was three things I learned through this process and I'm thankful that I learned um, my history or more of my history today because it made me stronger and it made me love myself even more and it made me realize that 
out of all of the things that have happened, you know, there's always hope. There's always more that you can do. There's always more that you can ex expand on. I just want to share these last three things with you guys before I go, and I'm going to leave it here. This was not planned or scripted out, as you could tell. I just got on a live stream because I wanted to share this message with, with you that was on my mind. <clears throat> I'll say hello to everybody. You guys are coming on here, and I'll say hello to everybody in a second. But I just wanted to um, um, share these three things with you. So, in that moment when I wanted, I started my business, and I decided, I decided that I was going to cut out everybody else's mess, including my own, and figure out how to love myself and figure out how figure out how to find my peace. It was three things I learned from going through this process. And the first thing was that I needed to never again give my power over to another person. Here's what I mean by that. Each one of us has our own, each one of us has our own, um, will. Everyone has our, every, every single one of us has willpower and every single one of us has a freedom of choice. We can choose to do whatever it is we want to do. Go wherever we want to go, live our life however we want to live it. And you don't have to let anybody dictate to you how you do that. You have free will. Each sing, each one of us is born with free will. But a lot of us take that, that free will that we have and we sacrifice it by giving our power over to somebody else who doesn't even have our best interest at heart in their mind. And you might have done this in a relationship. You might have done this with a guy who wasn't worth your time, let alone worth you giving them the power over you that you did in that particular relationship. I figured out that if I kept giving if I kept if I kept giving my power away to people who had no intention on bringing peace into my life, I was going to fall flat on my face and nothing was going to turn out the way I wanted it to turn out. So, I decided that I needed to stop giving my power over to other people. And it's a choice to make. Cuz if you don't make the choice, somebody else will make the choice for you. So, that was the first thing I had to learn and I stopped doing it. And the second thing was, I really had to say to myself, I'm going to take control of my life. I have to take control of my life. And I can remember, I can remember one of the nights where I shattered, like, I don't even know what version of iPhone it was. But I was so upset at somebody in my family because we had made some type of um, arrangement or it wasn't even a big deal. We made some type of arrangement or we were supposed to meet somewhere to take care of something. And I canceled a really important appointment that I needed to take care of for myself and my son to go do this thing with his family member. And they canceled out of nowhere, like no warning, no heads up, nothing. <clears throat> and it ended up throwing off my whole day. And I took my iPhone out of anger and I tossed it across the room and shattered it literally into like a hundred pieces. And that was the moment where I was like, I'm done with this shit. Like, I'm not doing this. Excuse me. I'm not doing this no more. I'm no longer going to put myself out or, again, give my power over to somebody else or not take control of my own life because I'm trying to please everybody else before I get done what needs to be done for me. Period. If I don't have peace, I'm just going to perish. And I kept saying it to myself over and over and over again. And that was another moment where it really hit me and I had to figure out what I needed to do so that I could figure out how to put Cena first. If you don't love you first, here's the thing. If you don't defend yourself and you don't love you first, and you don't take what you need to do for you and what you need to do for the things that are most important to you, whether it's your goals, your dreams, your mindset, your self-love, your finances, your home, whatever it is, if you don't take that, your God, your relationship with God, if you don't take that thing, and like I was just telling that story about my great grandma and her life and what happened. And even though the fact that, hey, and even though the fact that, you know, her mother was her parents, basically, she literally was a child out of slavery. Even though my great grandmother went through that and my grandma, my great grandmother, she couldn't read, she couldn't write her, her importance to her was her relationship with God. And she let nothing come before it. It was first. That was the first thing. Hey, Chris. That was the first thing. So if you don't put what's your thing 
first in your life, I promise you nobody else will, will do it. No one else will do it. And that thing that you say is the most important to you becomes the last thing you pay any attention to because you're constantly giving out your power to everybody else and everything else that shows, shows up in your life as it shows up in your life. I see moms who say their children are the top priority, but their children are not taken care of. I see women all over social media who say their career and their business is their top priority because they want to leave some kind of legacy for their life, but you still doing the same, you know, three or four different companies every four months and switching up and not making any progress towards what it is you're trying to do when you haven't invested in yourself yet. Like, what's really important to you? Because if it's really important to you, your actions and your words would line up. It would be in a line. Not the complete opposite. So that was the second thing I learned was that I had to take control of my life. If I was going to find my peace and I wasn't going to perish and the things I said were important to me were going to really be first, I had to stop giving my power over to everybody else, number one. And number two, I had to take control of my life. Like, seriously. Not just say it, but actually do it. That was two. And the last thing that I learned going through this journey, if you're just joining me, guys, if you're just joining and you missed the beginning of the um, live stream, go back because I was telling the story of how I learned today about my great, great grandparents and um, what that story like empowered in me and how I've been able to just further dig into, you know, what's important to me because I learned about my bloodline and where I came from and some of the things that happened with the women in my family. So if you missed that story, go back to the beginning of this uh, video, whether you're watching it now or you're going to watch the replay and check it out because you kind of, you will make, sh make sure you hear that story. Okay, so the last thing I learned, and this is what helped me find my peace and find my self-love, right? <clears throat> the last thing I learned was to be thankful <laughs> this is the good one. Be thankful for the work that comes from your hands. And I'm going to just pause on that. I cannot believe I came up here to do this live under all these lights and no water. It's okay. <laughs> um, be thankful for the work of your hands. Because do you realize how many people a day curse their jobs and curse the fruit of their own hands and don't give thanks for their work, their job. I don't care if you have a business and it's not prospering. If you have a day job, you need to be thanking God, the creator, the highest of highest. You need to thank him every single day that you have work. Because let me tell you something, guys, if you want to get to a point where if you're not there, and you want to get to a point where you're really like madly, truly in love with yourself and you're confident and you're showing up your best self. And even when you're not showing up your best self every day, you just keep trying and trying and trying. And it doesn't matter what happens to you or what people do to you or who betrayed you or who lied to you or who broke your heart. And you just keep going and going and going. If you're trying to get to that point, you got to be grateful for what you already got. Period. You lose what you don't use. And what you're not grateful for, it's not going to be around anymore. Period. It won't. So the third thing I had to learn when I was going through this and when I was searching for my peace was that I needed to be grateful for my work. Hey, Thomas, I needed to be grateful for my work. I needed to thank God every single day for the job I worked when I was working, you know, a daytime job. And then when I became a stay-at-home mom, I needed to thank him for those, day those days, even when it was hard. And my job was my son and my job was my family and my home and making sure things were cooked and clean. I needed to thank him for that. When I started, or as you guys can see, I'm still working in my business. When my business continued and when things happened, I had to thank him for my work because where would I be without it? How do I grow and impact and how do I expand without my work? Work is crucial. You don't work, you don't eat. You don't work, how do you live? So, those were the three things. I needed to stop giving my power over to everybody else. Stop being a people pleaser. Stop putting other people above my priorities. Because when you do that, nobody is going to put your priorities first if you don't do it. Right? So, that was the first thing. I had to stop doing that. And I did. Okay? 
The second thing was exactly Chris. He said attitude of gratitude. The second thing was that I needed to take control of my life and not just say it, literally do it, literally do it. You guys saw everything that happened this year, literally from January to now. And the reason I'm where I'm at right now, you know, not participating or participating in things that are important to me is because I'm taking control of my life. You can make your choices. I'm going to make mine. I have to take control of my life, and I did, and I do. That was the second thing. The third thing was thank God or be grateful. Be grateful for your work. Be grateful for your work. And I am so grateful. I want to say this again just to give honor because before I get off of here and um, ask you guys if you have anything you wanted to share. But exactly, Angela, thankfulness and respect of others. Exactly. I'm so thankful to the women who came before me, to all of my aunts, to my grandmother, to, you know, my great grandmother, um, to the women in my lineage who fought and went through all of these things that they went through. And um, I'm so thankful that I found out about my DNA and my history today. And I'm so thankful for what you did and what you paid and, and, and the way you paved the way. Because that teaches me how to keep my faith at a at a level that I couldn't even imagine the level that, you know, the women in my lineage had to have their faith at for the world they were living in and for the reality they were living in. But I know the world I'm living in and I know that my faith is at another level because I'm learning from these women that came before me. If you didn't catch the beginning, I was sharing um, how I'm learning. I'm still learning how to love myself more and be more confident because I learned you know, some things about my history and some things about my past today through my ancestry and, um, not the company. <laughs> and basically I just want to kind of close with this, you know, this is a journey. You're not going to wake up one day and just love yourself, especially if you don't know how to right now. You're not going to wake up one day and be confident. You're not going to wake up one day and be a master at whatever it is you're trying to do. It's a journey. It's a One second, guys. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, my Wi-Fi wanted to do something. Anyway, it's a journey. It's a process. And it's going to take time. It is going to take you time. Give yourself time. Give yourself space. Give yourself the the space to win give yourself peace if you need to cut people off do so if you need to back up from family members for a minute who aren't respecting where you're trying to go do so if you need to figure out how to you know create an environment where you can think and you can work on yourself and you can make it happen do that it's cool it's okay i'm telling you if nobody else told you it's okay you need to do that because you're not going to get to where you're trying to get you're not going to hit your transformation, let alone be the person that you're trying to be if you don't create that space of peace for yourself. If you don't have peace, you're going to perish. I'm just keeping it real. I just want you to know that. You need to do what you need to do for you if you're not already doing it. So I want to invite you, if you're watching this live or on a replay, wherever you're watching it, I want to invite you over to my private group of peace and um, lessons like this and accountability and me sharing my experiences with you and you sharing your experiences with me so that we can walk together as we go through this process of getting you to your next transformation okay this is what I do I coach I am a coach okay <laughs> and if you I know you're on some of you guys are on Facebook right now watching this so if you don't do Facebook too often um, I understand. Find a way to kind of just be a part of it without getting caught up in the rest of it. But my group is on Facebook. You're welcome, Angela. You're welcome, my love. Thank you. Please share this out, by the way. If this is helping you and this is in, if this has been of value to you in any way, share this out and share how it has helped you so that, you know, your timeline and your peeps on your uh, page can get some motivation and inspiration for the day. They may need it, too. But I want to invite you over to my Facebook group, the Confidence Catchers Community. Confidence, <clears throat> I'll spell it for you. It's my favorite word. C-O-N-F-I-D-E-N-C-E, -E, Confidence Catchers, C-A-T-C-H-E-R-S, Community. Okay? Confidence Catchers Community. If you're a part of my tribe, that's what I call you. I call you a confidence catcher. That's your name. Welcome. <laughs> okay, so join me over there if, you know, this is something that you want to experience every day. 
and um, you and I can actually even schedule some time to kind of get on the phone and have a conversation one to one complimentary just to see where you are and to see if how we can go through steps of working together to get you to your next transformation because I want to help you catch your confidence and heal from your emotional abuse so that you can have a reality where love never has to hurt again got it otherwise have a fantastic rest of your day rest of your night depending on where you are watching this from I Truly love you, and I hope to see you over in the Facebook group as we finish out the rest of our challenge this week. Share this out with somebody who needs it. It might change their life as much as it has just changed yours, okay? Talk to you soon. Bye.